gets to go first here. Looks like four versus two. So Sam will decide if he wants to be the first player or not. And of course the Han and Ray deck, the e Han e Ray deck, uh, makes a lot of use out of the Starship Graveyard, so it's a no-brainer for him to choose his battlefield. And so now we see two shield, or one shield going on Bala and one shield going on Django. So one thing for John to be aware of is that because this deck is so explosive, uh, it is very possible for, with the right amount of ambush cards and extra actions, for Bala to be one shot even before he gets to take a roll. Right. Yeah. So we see Sam starting with the Jedi robes on, on Ray, getting those two shields because it is the first turn of the game. Rolling out Han with the extra action. Massive six damage roll, but of course, uh, Sam has no money yet. So that means that John has no need to play out, or sorry, roll out his Django. Instead, to Alex to put a holdout blaster onto his Django. So we see a hunker down, and it looks like Sam actually passed, chose not to roll out his his ray, and now Bala rolls out, and now Sam decides to roll out his, and it looks like a resource. So at least some of that damage. Yeah, some of that damage. Uh, Django got rolled out in response. Uh, I know John forgot to, to exhaust his Django character. I can go ahead and fix that in a second. Um, sloppy, sloppy side. play. Yeah. Scavenge. Oh, scavenge looks like a discard to. Oh, no. Right, because because John rolled out Django, it is still his turn to take an action. I'm going to go and fix the game state. Whenever we uh, whenever we stream or post a video on YouTube, the first people complain thing people complain about is people not tapping their cards or untapping their cards. Yeah, I forget that too. A lot of times when I first started yeah. playing this game, yeah, I forgot that you actually have to exhaust your characters. So was that a discard scavenge to reroll yeah, Ray? Works. Okay. So, so we see uh, another. another um, yeah. Another re-roll and disrupt, and then a yep. damage modifier. Not really great. And, and that's what I was talking about earlier when uh, Ray's actual like damage capability is not that great. Like this deck sometimes kind of plays like Ray plays the same sort of role as say Akbar does in an E Luke Akbar deck, in that she's just there to kind of get the extra action so that Han can actually deal the damage uh, out of phase. Right. Yeah. Pearly Yeti, if I were to tilt the camera like 45 degrees, you would see the other side of room all playing magic. Because it's like game day right now, I think. Either Revolt Game Day or something like that. So a bunch of magic players here. Of course, we're playing, we're streaming the far better game, Destiny. Nobody wants to see that magic nonsense. Okay, so that was a discard in Infamous to reroll here. Interesting. Yeah. And he got two resources, but he re-rolled one of those damages. So now he's showing three resources, actually. I, do you know if, like, once uh, once the Han Ray deck gets a bunch of upgrades, at that point there's just overriding stuff, right? And Brian getting it back with the Starship Brave Card, so it's not like they need a lot of money, if I'm if I'm not mistaken. Um, but I mean, yeah. uh, up until that point, like, getting the resources early just lets you go a little bit faster, so. Yeah. So that's uh, Sam taking a bunch of money here. Uh, getting ready to shoot a big gun at perhaps Django or Bala. Now, which which one do you would you go after? Like, I would probably kill Bala first, right? Now, this is a Sam is playing a two character deck, so the Bala's ability isn't as annoying as it would be in in a three player. Looks like he's going after Django. Three player game, yeah. And uh, if you've if you've ever listened to the Tiny Grimes uh, podcast about this deck. Or the Knights of Ren podcast about uh, the Django Bala Trooper deck, and that the reason it's so effective is that it presents a diversity of threats. So in an, a, a Django Veers deck, I mean, you're always going to go after Django no matter what. But depending on your matchup, uh, Bala can be just as dangerous. Uh, he has some really good uh, sides on his dice, and especially if you're playing a bunch of chuds, like guys that don't have a lot of health, uh, no-name guys. 
uh, you are getting a lot of activation advantage out of Balotic's ability. And it takes the heat off Django too. So if you if you feel Baltic's getting focused, just drop a bunch of stuff onto Django, and you know he's still a dangerous character in his own right. So that's the end of the first turn. Uh, looks like Sam claimed the battlefield there. Uh, he put the Infamous back into onto the top of his deck, I think. Yeah. So Sam is going to get the first action this this turn. Uh, looks like John elected to go after Han, which is actually, I mean. Most of the time, I see people go after Ray instead of Han. Uh, sure, but if you get if you get rid of Han, yeah, a lot of the damage threat goes away. Yeah, like Ray gives you kind of the action advantage, but it can be difficult to get the damage bases on a lot of those dice. It's also difficult to to kill Han once you've got a lot of ambush stuff going on, right? Because uh, you know, obviously, he replenishes shields quite quickly yeah. with the amount of ambush in this deck. I think it's, it was. There were no shields on him yet. There are a couple shields on Ray. He thinks maybe he can uh, work his way through it. Yep. Uh, so showing the that two disrupt side. Uh, one of the things you can do with the Ehan E Ray deck on the first turn of the game is, if you're lucky enough to have a say a hold up blaster in your hand, you can. Equip the Holdout Blaster, roll out Han, get a 2 Disrupt, and disrupt your opponent's first two resources, which could be a huge tempo swing uh, in most matchups. Uh, not, not quite as effective later on in the game when opponents have a lot of dice on the table already, so this is not quite as backbreaking as, say, if it was on the first turn. But now we see um, the DL44 being placed on Ray. That's interesting. <clears throat> so Sam, I mean, saw that Han was getting targeted and now is deciding to just uh, spend all his his cards on Ray instead. Rolling out Ray, we see a one melee side, a one resource side. Uh, so this is not a very uh, pressuring roll here. It looks like John passed. No, oh, no, no. This would be the ambush reroll, right? Yeah. So with a reroll, we see it looks like a, the two damage side on that blaster, and some more money. So Sam resolving the blaster. It looks like it was a three damage side. Yeah, I think the blaster has a three and then a three for money side. So there is no two damage side there. Rolling out the trooper here. Blank side. Not a big deal in red yellow villain decks because you have always have access to he doesn't like you, of course. So it's kind of almost like a free die to use for that. Now, I, you know, I would... He played Infamous. Do you think you would have rather resolved Ray's die here to, like, get rid of that hunker down, the melee side? To get rid of the hunker down on Django? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so Bala rolls. Uh, see, one of the reasons why he's so good, he has a focus side but on him. You, you, you can afford to wait one because there's nothing he can do to shield up. That is true, yes. In the interim? Yeah. Electroshocks that. So now Bala's forced to use his focus on maybe the trooper die or his other yellow die if he wants to get that modifier. So yeah, I'm thinking he, in his head he was wanting to get infamous because he knew he was going to electroshock. Oh yeah, yeah, that's that's true. Yeah, just get those shields up on him. Now, if the dice stay, he has plenty of damage to get through the one shield. So. Yeah, well, see now now Ray's uh, this is a rare <laughs> three damage from Ray's dice here. Most of the time, you're either rolling the modifiers or just the base one damage. So we have a judge question, so Victor's going to go help him out with that. Yeah, Alexis, I think the real problem is a good battlefield is only good if you can be taking advantage of it most of the time. If you're not going to be claiming the battlefield a lot, you want to limit the advantage that your opponent's going to get. So it, you're going to see a lot of times where people are scared to do something too powerful. Right. So he didn't like you, got rid of the uh, one melee, so no melee swing now. Sorry about that, I just had a... Uh judge call not that i'm the judge or anything but anyway somebody had a question about whether or not you were required to use the um 
the the ability on the battlefield if you claimed it. And of course, the answer is no. You don't have to. So I miss anything interesting? So uses the damage, strips the shield, does another damage to Han. So Han sitting at six, five damage. Um, so yeah, um, Sam just claimed the battlefield. I didn't see what he put at the top of his deck. Uh, it looks like it wasn't the uh, infamous again. Sam, I saw draw, drew a one with the force. Hunker down, another infamous. Well, one with the force is a good card in this deck, but generally because uh, most people go after Ray first, it, that's when it becomes a lot more attractive because. You just put it on, you get your extra action, and then if Ray dies, it becomes a support for the rest of the game. And and one with the force of the sides that it has on it, I mean, its damage side is a three damage side, uh, plus it has no blank side, so even when Ray dies, it's actually a really good support uh, all by itself. And of course, since you're overriding in this deck so much with, with Han and Ray, uh, you're never really paying the full retail cost of that, of that upgrade. So Sam's trying to decide what he's going to do here. Starts off with a ambush jetpack on Han. Gets, gets the, the shield and yep. gets to decide what uh, second action he wants to take. He's going to roll Han. Yeah, and that's going to probably prompt a roll from Django here. I don't think that was the roll that he was hoping for. No. Uh, well, for either player. Really. That, that was one of see, the, like I said at the beginning of this game. That's one of the reasons why I'm not a big fan of this. Ihani Redeck. I mean, no doubt. Like, Sam's a really good player. I mean, obviously, he's in... This is the top table right now. But, you know, sometimes you just get weak sauce rolls like this. So, there's a modifier. The plus whatever modifier. And it's kind of hard to see on the small screen. Uh, what? what do we mean? On the DL44. Oh, yeah, the plus two? yeah, it's a plus two modifier on the DL44. But again, he doesn't have a base damage capitalized on it. So, like, you have the, you have the jetpack, which, uh, of course makes a good damage roll even better if you're lucky enough of course but still nothing so bala rolling out here still the garbage so one one variation of this uh Django bala trooper deck i've seen is to replace Django with phasma instead and one of the reasons for that is that phasma and bala they both have a focus side on their dice so it makes your damage a lot more consistent yeah uh, and of course, Django has a one melee side, which can't really combo with a lot of the modifiers that some of these guns have. So there's fatal damage for Django here. I don't. We'll see if um, we'll see if John has anything he can do about that one unmodified dice. I'm guessing since this is going slowly, that he doesn't. I guess, sorry, I guess, I guess it's not quite fatal damage with the three shields. But I mean, I think you'll take that trade of getting rid of three of their dice and then still landing a bunch of damage on uh, yeah. Django. So it takes an extra three damage, goes through the shields. Django's sitting on two HP. Rolls out the trooper. Uh, hasn't activated Hunker Down yet. Looks like two damage now. I don't think he has anything he can do with dice without uh, resources here. So yeah, he's looking at four damage coming back. Let's see three, four, five. You need to deal uh, six damage right now if you wanted to kill Han. So Sam here going for the reroll. Looks like one melee on Ray, two, two ranged on Han. Uh, that is enough to kill. Django, yeah, unless even with, even with he, the hunker down. Yeah. yeah. And it, it's not clear though, but John has no money, right? Like all those resources sitting no, on the side. Everything that's, there is discarded. Uh, I see. On the bottom of the screen there? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Syrian, uh, I don't think there's anyone playing a real Hyperloop deck today. I haven't seen the entire field. Uh, I, I did play it in one tournament and decided that I can't be that type of person anymore. <laughs> I, I mean, the first round, actually, the Akbar 2 Hired Gun deck that we had on stream, 
that deck was running a Millennium Falcon and it was running Hyperspace Jump, but I can't remember if the battlefield was the Emperor's Throne Room, which is what makes that Hyperloop the Hyperloop. So yeah, I mean, I would have to say that there's actually not a lot of Hyperloop players in Toronto. Uh, in fact, the the deck that I see played more than the Hyperloop deck is a variation of it that runs Elite Ray and Elite Poe Dameron. Uh, it also runs Emperor's Throne Room. It doesn't have Hyperloop, but it's basically using Poe's special ability with the Emperor's Throne Room to throw mind probes and force throws yeah. at the opponent. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, goodbye, Han. Yeah, I mean, I think John doesn't mind that trade, trading a Han for Django. No, I don't think so. Yeah, again, Dork, I've, I've seen that too. Like, when it's hot, it's hot, the Hyperloop deck, but uh, you're right, there's, there's too much social cost, I would imagine, to play that deck. Versus how good it does. Yeah, and like to really have the edge to for it to really be effective. Yeah, you have to be so brutal about just re-rolling everything until it's yeah way in your advantage. And I mean, just... at, at which point you might as well just be playing Django Beers because then you don't need like a bunch of cards in play in order to, to set up a situation where you're just re-rolling all the time. No, you're right. Uh, he did forget to ready Bala as a reaction to uh, Django dying. Yeah. I find a lot of Bala players forget about his ability. Yeah, if you if you haven't been playing with the deck, any deck with Bala in it constantly, it's really easy to forget. Especially as if, like what a lot of players do, they just jam their dice on top of the card itself after you've resolved the dice. So you're covering up the text and then you're like, oh, wait a minute, he's got an ability on him. So, I mean, Ray is going to have a hard time getting any real damage out. I mean, there might be some combination of upgrades you can put on them. I mean, I suspect that next round, uh, Sam is going to put uh, one with the Force on on Ray. But yeah, I mean, killing Han and leaving Ray. I mean, it's it's a hard enough task to kill Han. It's an upward slog, uh, upward hill slog. But once you do it, I mean, unless uh, unless Sam's rolls go go in his favor quite a bit, it's. Uh, it's not going to be that easy for him to win here. Well, use the force here. Um, but I, don't, I don't know if there's anything without any dice on the table that uh, John could really do about the free damage. He doesn't have a he doesn't like you or anything? Oh, I he guess he has to roll no out dice the, on the table, yeah. And it's not vulnerable to an electroshock, so some, ver situations. some versions of this deck play cannon fodder. Okay. Uh, so that's one way of getting rid of it. Of course, he has one resource, I believe. So uh, the best defense is another option. Best defense also, yeah, as well, yeah. I mean, at this point, if you best defense, it's it's as if you're taking three range, but you're also getting to remove two of their dice. So this is what a heat. So use the force to change the modifier side to a blank. Why not the base damage side? He might figure he's getting damage either way. Oh, sure, yeah. And get rid of the bigger number. Like, he's going to keep re-rolling. Yeah. Okay, so with, with a resource and all of those dice, it's not that hard to re-roll into yeah. uh, another blaster. <laughs> so now uh, Sam's going to concentrate on Balatique. John's going to roll out his first order of TIE Fighter. Blanks out. I can't tell if John has any cards left in this. Yeah, he has quite a few. So, still opportunity to reroll a bunch of cards here. Or dice here, rather. Showing four damage at the moment. Easily can add to that number. Did uh, Sam claim there, or is he still deciding? Yeah, I don't know. He doesn't... Discard two damage. Roll. He discarded confiscation. Wow, that's a resource-intensive card. It's a this is a unique version of this deck and disarm. 
This, this seems to be a lot more controlling because, I mean, most of these uh, Bala Django trooper decks I've seen, they don't run first order Tie Fighter. They don't run disarm so six or on, confiscation. Yeah. Six damage onto Ray, uh, the majority of which is absorbable. Yeah, by shields. So you must have claimed that, Sam. Yeah, he probably had no reason not to. Yeah. You know, Alexis, when I saw Balatik for the first time in this game, I had a really hard time remembering where he was from. Like, I figured he was from The Force Awakens, but I just... I just didn't... <laughs> I was like, what? what is this guy? Like, And then and it wasn't until I think I was re-watching the movie, I was like, oh, it's the dude with the Scottish accent. And then apparently that's his backup muscle is... Uh, that's uh, Balatik's crew. Oh, was it? Yeah, the guys with the the ba guys on the backup muscle. It's the Balatik's uh, gang members or whatever. All right. So next turn, roll out. So replace the blaster. Yep. With uh, one with the force. I think this is another one where it's just a little bit of a matter of time. Yep. Look at John again, not forgetting to unexhaust his characters in between rounds. What? If if Sam got a lucky roll and killed Balatik, I mean, this is this is not very good for for Sam here. This is three damage. Uh, so that means that would put that would put Ray at eight damage. Yeah. And John hasn't played any backup muscles yet, I don't think so. If he has one in his hand, then I think it's lights out if he gets to resolve those three damage here. Okay, so not enough damage. Yep. Resolving the focus to three damage, looks like. The modifier and the base, yeah. So we'll see if John has any control in response. He doesn't like you. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you're playing red against a red-yellow villain deck, Odds are they have some sort of control in their hand because they just have so much access to to all these good control cards. It's going to be interesting to see what uh, additional control options, not only villain, red, yellow, villain, or like any color really, but uh, particularly hero because that's one of my pet projects is I want to make uh, hero mill good. I mean, it has all the it has the mill off the top of your deck. It has the discard die faces on some of its cards it just doesn't have the control that red yellow villain has right. to get there quite enough so I see unpredictable rolling out stormtroopers to damage side here uh, gets a blank but we're still we still see three damage here and then here comes the first order tie fighter with a disrupt side uh, not sure how relevant that is So Electroshock seems like a waste for Sam to Electroshock one die. Although I do see, do I see a Disarm? I thought I saw a Disarm. Hammer. It would yeah. make sense for him to get rid of something. Yeah, you could get rid of the Jetpack here. Uh, you could get rid of the Holdout Blaster, which might be rel relevant. Hold up, yeah, Holdout Blaster, since it can redeploy, it's yeah. going to carry over. And is this a Disarm back? Is this, no, you can't Disarm anything on. You can just Disarm 100 in. Oh, no. It's on the equipment, I don't think. Yeah, this is just a reroll here. Discard to reroll. Uh, oh, it's a jetpack special. And oh, first order Tie Fighter special, and also a plus two modifier. So that's one, two, three, four, five range damage showing on Sam's dice. Uh, this is disarm, throwing away the holdout blaster. Okay, so there goes the disarm. There goes the holdout blaster die. So I think he was just waiting for for a reroll there. Sam might just want to resolve specials here now. Get rid of that shield on on Ray before applying the three damage. Yeah. 
This is a discard to reroll. Looks like on the hunt and stormtrooper. And the yeah, the first order. There we go. Just trying to deal the killing blow here. Now he rolls on the hunt special, which is effectively the same thing at this point as the first order tie fighter special. So. Uh, he did, looks like he did roll a 2 damage range side on the Stormtrooper there, so now he's showing 5 damage here. Uh, that's not quite enough to kill Ray just yet, uh, even with the On the Hunt special. So we may be looking at one more discard to try to finish off, uh, yeah, try to finish it off. Or maybe even start with a, oh, I see an arm to the teeth. Actually, so this might be a killing blow here, yeah. So we deal five damage to Ray. So it puts her at nine, and then you arm to the teeth, throwing Bala's weapons at Ray, and I think that's game here. Yeah, there it is. And that's the game. Congratulations to John. Uh, winning with a deck that is quite popular and quite good.